Hey viewers, originally today I was going to make a guide on generating new LODs for Fallout 4 since plenty of people were asking for it, and I can't deny that vanilla LODs look like utter trash. After spending hours messing around with various programs, I did manage to generate some better LODs, but the problem is, I can't exactly retrace my steps to make a reliable guide. If I attempted to do so, I'd likely leave you more confused than before you started watching. After wasting way too much time on that LOD idea, I had to think on my feet to come up with a quick replacement video. Luckily, I remembered that just a few days ago, Fallout 4 had its 8th anniversary, and in honor of those 8 long years, I've cooked up a list of 8 horrible bugs and oversights in Fallout 4. One for every year. All of these bugs have been there since the day the game released, and Bethesda has done absolutely nothing to fix any of them. When possible, I'll link mods in the description that fix these problems, but of course, not all of them can be fixed by modders, at least not properly. Without the source code, there's only so much you can do after all. That's why it would have been nice if Bethesda stepped in and squashed these bugs a long time ago, rather than leave it to modders to clean up their broken mess. A year ago, they promised us a next-gen update sometime in 2023, and 2023 is almost over, so unless they break their promise, Maybe this next-gen update will arrive soon and finally fix at least some of these critical issues? Uh, I wouldn't hold my breath for it, but it's nice to have some hope. Even if it's false hope. Alright, no more delays, let's jump right into the bugs. First up is a bug people call the survival mode freeze, because it's most likely to happen in survival mode. How it works is basically when you're in VATS, the game will sometimes lock up when you equip an item which is usually not a problem because you're not allowed to equip anything during VATS. However, in survival mode, potions, and yeah, they're called potions like this is the fucking Elder Scrolls, are forcibly equipped at regular intervals to apply debuffs related to thirst, starvation, and so on. If you're unlucky enough to be in VATS when this happens, congratulations, it might be time to restart the game and load your last save. I say might because when I tried deliberately triggering the glitch to get footage for this video, the game didn't freeze. I tried over a dozen times, in different locations, I disabled all my mods, I enabled depth of field, I did everything people said increases the chance of this happening, and I couldn't get the game to freeze even once. I'm fairly certain that Bethesda never fixed this bug, so my guess is it could be related to script latency, perhaps a fast processor prevents it from occurring. That's just a guess though. If you are affected by this nasty bug, don't look to Bethesda for help. They've done nothing to fix it since Survival Mode launched in March 2016. I guarantee tens of thousands of people have lost tens of thousands of hours of hard-earned progress because of this shit. So far, nobody has been able to make an engine level fix that allows items to be equipped during VATS without risking Fallout 4 dying, but modders have done the best they can. There's a mod that rewrites Survival Mode's main script to delay potion equipping until after VATS is safely over. That's the best solution available right now. It's not perfect, but it's the best you have. If I wanted to, I could fill up my entire list solely with bugs related to the differences between first and third person, but I'll restrict myself to one unbelievable discrepancy. Of all the basic things you'd think Bethesda would test in both perspectives, movement speed would be at the very top of the list. How hard could it possibly be to make sure the player moves at the same speed in both first and third person? Apparently too damn hard for Bethesda. In many scenarios you can move faster in first person than third person, sometimes significantly faster. This problem is easier to notice when you use a bunch of armor with Sprinter's legendary effects. These legendary effects work as expected in first person, but in third person they don't work at all while crouching or sprinting. This can lead to situations where you can jog faster than you can sprint. What a screw up. For the couple hundred or so people who actually play Bethesda games in third person, this is yet another way you got screwed over by Fallout 4. There is a mod that attempts to rectify these speed differences, but it doesn't fully work. Crouched movement is still slow as molasses in third person. You just have to live with this problem, I suppose. This is one of the most annoying glitches in the game, and it's particularly infuriating in survival mode. It's one thing to get one-shotted by a Molotov or mini-nuke you couldn't avoid, but touching a car and instantly dying is ridiculous. I think everyone who's played this game long enough has died at least once to this stupidity. Now technically this instant death glitch can happen with any physics object if it's moving fast enough, since impact damage is dependent on both weight and speed, but it's most common with cars because they weigh a ton and they're prone to spazzing out at random. 
there's two mods that fix the death car issue, one that reduces physics damage by 100 times, and another script-based mod that eliminates physics damage entirely. Neither mod seems to break the junk jet or anything important, so you can use either one. I prefer the mod that doesn't use any scripts myself. Changing game settings via script is unnecessary, and it's always good practice to have as few script-adding mods in your load order as humanly possible. If you're one of the overwhelming majority of people that has a 16x9 monitor, Fallout 4 won't give you any problems because of your aspect ratio. But if you're unfortunate enough to have a monitor with any other aspect ratio, you are going to have a much worse experience. 16x10 and 3x2 monitors don't have it that bad. I had a 16x10 monitor back in 2015, and the only problem I ever encountered was the edges of scope overlays being transparent, like you can see here. Ultra-wide resolutions like 21x9 or 32x9 are completely screwed, sadly. The main menu and other FMVs are displayed in 16x9 with some highly cinematic black bars on the edges of the screen. The interface is stretched out, and those shaded boxes that are supposed to fit inside their brackets are misaligned with them. It looks like shit. The power armor overlay doesn't cover the entire screen, and it looks embarrassing. Bethesda should be ashamed of themselves for the sorry state of Fallout 4's ultra-wide support. It's not like ultra-wide monitors didn't exist in 2015, they absolutely did. 4x3 and 5x4 aspect ratios are even more broken. The interface is squashed quite badly. The brackets and boxes are misaligned too, just like ultra-wide resolutions. In addition, the lockpicking minigame is invisible for some reason. The power armor overlay also gets cut off, making it impossible to see your health or action points for the most part. This is really disappointing because a lot of people with integrated graphics rely on low resolutions like 800x600 or 640x480 to make games playable at all. But Fallout 4 gives zero fucks about impoverished peasants trying to play on their potato rigs, or those still using CRT monitors. At least diegetic interfaces like the Pip-Boy and Terminals work properly no matter what resolution you're using, but that's hardly any compensation. Fact of the matter is, you'll need mods and INI tweaks to make Fallout 4 playable on non-16x9 monitors. Fallout 4 should win some kind of award for being the game with the most Z-fighting ever. It's worse than any modern game I've ever seen. I think you'd have to go back to the PlayStation 1, a console with no Z-buffer at all, to find games that have more Z-fighting than this. A lot of the blame has to go to the level designers, who often placed thin objects like posters or vines too close to walls, or mistakenly placed objects inside of each other. Due to floating point imprecision, the further away the camera gets from these problem areas, the more flickering you'll see. Z-fighting isn't the only problem, you'll frequently see objects being culled out long before they go off screen. This overly aggressive culling is likely a result of Bethesda's desperate attempts to get Fallout 4 running above 20 FPS on the PS4 and Xbox One. Now I understand why they went all in on depth of field, bloom, distance blur, and god rays. Intense lighting looks impressive, and it makes any flaws harder to spot. Nobody will notice how ugly our game is if they can barely fucking see it, was their logic. If you're tired of finding Z-fighting and holes in the world, use Previsibeans Repair Project. It doesn't fix every area, but it's a good start. We all know that Fallout 4's game logic is tied pretty much directly to the frame rate. If you manage to get this unoptimized nightmare running at 300 or 400 FPS, everything will be sped up 5 or 6 times. Animations, physics, sound effects, you name it. Even at 75 or 80 FPS, you can't jump as high, and dialogue lines will start to step on each other. This would be less of a problem if Fallout 4 had a built-in 60 FPS limiter, but it doesn't. Fallout 4 only has forcibly enabled V-Sync, which is not the same thing. If you have a high refresh rate monitor, the game will run above 60 FPS until it hits your refresh rate. I guess Bethesda assumed everyone in the world would always be exclusively using 60Hz monitors. That was a very bold and stupid assumption for them to make. Because of this issue, you quite literally need a mod or external frame rate capping software to play Fallout 4 on the average PC today. I talked about this bug before in one of my four major problems videos, but it's worth rehashing again. You see this terminal? This is the terminal that spawns in the Pridwin. If you leave Fort Hagen the way you came in after killing Kellogg, the Brotherhood of Steel will never arrive in force to the Commonwealth. I know for a fact it's possible to beat the main quest going down the Minutemen path without ever spawning in or interacting with the Brotherhood, but I wonder how far you can get into the Institute or Railroad quest lines before they break. 
I didn't have time to go through any quest lines for this video, but that might be something to look into for the future. In any case, this has to be one of the most embarrassing bugs present in any Bethesda game. Maybe the penthouse apartment getting reset in Starfield is worse, but I think this one might top that for being so easily foreseeable and avoidable. All Bethesda had to do was spawn in the Pridwin no matter which exit you used to leave the building. Putting down one or two extra trigger volumes would have avoided the entire problem. Have you ever felt like energy weapons drop off in effectiveness once you get into the late game? Well, it turns out that's not just a gut feeling. The armor system is biased against non-ballistic weapons. You see, with ballistic weapons, all damage, whether it's from a weapon's base damage or attachments or from damage increasing perks and magazine bonuses, goes up against a target's damage resistance to determine the final damage. But with energy weapons, only their base damage is calculated against energy resistance. That means unlocking new perks and adding better attachments to your energy weapons does exactly nothing to help penetrate enemy armor. Thanks to this oversight, energy weapons are completely overshadowed in the late game. Aside from role-playing purposes, there's not many reasons to be an energy weapons user. This bug was fixed in Fallout 76 when users discovered and complained about it, but Bethesda never went back to fix it in Fallout 4. Luckily, a new mod called Energy Weapon Calculation Fix has arrived, and it fixes the damage formula for energy weapons. It only took 8 years, but now, energy weapons are a viable alternative to ballistic weapons, like they were always intended to be. Okay, video over. I know it kind of sucked, but hey, at least I drew some attention to a handful of critical bugs that Bethesda has ignored for 8 years. 8 years, that's a long time. In that time, I could have gone back to school, gotten a degree, a high-paying job, gotten married, and sired some offspring. Of course, I didn't do any of that, thank fuck. I'm just illustrating that 8 years is a long damn time to completely neglect a game you're still selling microtransactions for. But, uh, whatever. Bethesda never changes. Toodles, everybody.